scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. So scattered through scripture, we see that favor is a reality. We saw it in the life of the nation of Israel. Scattered through scripture, we see that speed is a possibility. Scattered through scripture, we see that restoration is a possibility. Scattered through scripture, we see that all these dimensions are there so that, listen, the Bible says the things that are written aforetime, it says, that they are for our learning. That means those, those historic materials should mentor us into an understanding. They are for our learning so that we, through the comfort of scripture, might find hope. Hope that makes not ashamed. That if he did it before, then he's able to do it again. And one of those mysteries that represents a system of advantage, as I call them. You see, everybody's life is ordinary and the same. Except for the leverage that the systems of advantage provide for you. So we all have common destinies, but we begin to rewrite our destinies as we access the systems of advantage. We introduce these dimensions of kingdom reality to our lives and our lives begin to change. So it is possible to find two people born of the same woman under the same conditions, sociologically speaking and territorially speaking. So you would think that their destinies would look like the same one, you know, would, would, would be the same. But one of them would access these systems of advantage and begin to change things in their lives. When they looked at Jesus, because of his association with Nazareth, even Nathaniel spoke and said, can anything good? It was not Nathaniel's fault. Jesus never said, you are lying. That is the pattern, except that the son of the living God already had his to change it. Everything is true until your life changes it. It is true that delay is there. It is true that failure is there. It is true that spirits associated with territory can manipulate disfavor upon people. It remains true until you rise by light. Are we blessed? And so we want to explore very briefly the mystery of restoration. That among the mysteries, the body of truth according to matthew 13 and verse 11 in one of his mentorship sessions jesus began to teach and while he was teaching in parables he was shrouding mysteries in those parables and then later on he would explain to the disciples and he said it has been given unto you to know the word know there does not just mean an awareness it's the same word that is used as a man knowing his wife an encounter with proofs it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. These are the ordinances that cause the saints to command dominion on earth. You may have heard me say it once and again that dominion is not an impartation. Dominion is the resultant effect of your comprehending the mysteries of the kingdom. Hallelujah. The mystery of restoration. Are we still together? Joel chapter 2 and verse 25. We've learned from scripture and we've learned from the experience of living that it is possible to lose things. Sadly, many people have lost loved ones. Sadly, 
many people have lost money sadly many people have lost time so there are the bible lets us know that the concept of losses or losing is a concept that exists with men we can lose things but according to the, the, the bible the greatest loss that can happen to a man is not the loss of things it is the loss of time and so when he begins to talk about restoration his emphasis is the years not the things I will restore the years because when you meet a dying man he will not ask you to make, transfer money into his account the greatest need of a dying man is more time Isaiah 38 Hezekiah did not require more money or an enlargement of his throne or rest round about Hezekiah's request was God give me more time that means whatever steals your time is a true enemy if you lose money and gain it back you lose your reputation there are systems to build it back but when you lose time listen please it is because of this that the Bible says to walk circumspectly as wise, he says, and not as unwise. And what is the wisdom there? Master anything you know in scripture that will help you to redeem time. He called it wisdom. That means when I explore the mysteries of the kingdom, it will give me an advantage over time. Are we together? If you lose time, they may not physically speaking be a way of gaining it back but we thank god because we serve a god who does not live in time we thank god because we serve a god who does not really even live in eternity because eternity is still a subject of time it's just time without end we serve a god who lives in a realm that the bible calls unapproachable light his realm is now no past no present no future now the concept of distance time does not is not a reality that exists in his realm it was a borrowed phenomenon to help men catch up with him that god does not leave genesis 1 verse 1 in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth that means he was not in the heavens he was not in the earth you can't create what you are inside are we together now, please sit down pay attention so when we talk about the mystery of restoration we are trusting by the spirit of grace and wisdom to explore the systems of advantage listen it is on the strength of these mysteries that apostle paul will say for we know that all things all things do not just work just because we are christians there is a system of advantage we have that regardless that's why many times when you are complaining god really does not listen because in his realm it doesn't make any difference what you've lost or what you had it, it doesn't those realities are, are are vain it is within his power to reconstruct anything as though it never left so when you are saying god remember what i went through he says that, that is unnecessary there there are too many mysteries i can use to bring you back it's why it's painful to not trust God because it's an insult on his ability that even in heaven they are not done learning his ability in heaven without the constraint of the mortal nature with that heightened level of intelligence and through ages they have they have been students of God in heaven and yet they have not been able to comprehend so when the inhabitants on earth now begin to use the the temporary vacillations to insult the character of God is indicting on his nature. When God says he is God, it takes the spirit of God to help you understand the meaning of that statement. Now you be God, almighty God. Listen to yourself. You know be man. Stop. Let me explain that to you. God is not a man. He only became a man. When you say God is a man, that means he must submit to someone. The person who created him must demand worship from him. But he became a man, meaning that it was an inconvenience he wore for as a representation of love, not weakness. You see that? We are men, we are not God. We are men, but he made us. It's a translation. 
so that our dominion this godlike dominion today is not absolute dominion is shared dominion dominion that can be withdrawn as proof that it did not originate from you you, you, you get what I'm trying to explain yes so when when we say God is not a man and then the Bible says the man Jesus is seated at the right hand of the father it's not a contradiction God is not a man but he became a man so that he will reveal the extent of the love of the father but I assure you God is not a man hallelujah praise the Lord Genesis chapter 40 help us Holy Spirit the things that are written aforetime the Bible declares that they are for our learning so that we through the comfort of scripture might find hope Genesis chapter 40 just a little background this is the story of Joseph and his sojourn from his father's house to the place of destiny this is a classic on understanding the dynamics of destiny it is one of the classic expressions of how a man can transit himself from his father's house through the vicissitudes of life into a place of prophecy there is a spiritual road map through the life of Joseph that if understood discerned and followed by any Christian inevitably regardless of that which you face on the way you will emerge not only a champion but you will be a representation of the desire of God are we together yes this is very very powerful it's amazing pastor sir that when you begin your journey with God he never tells you what will happen on the way he will tell you that you will get to a land flowing with milk and honey so that you will set your gaze on that end but the dynamics of that journey is something that we must learn are we together please follow me Genesis chapter 40 so um, at this point a lot had happened to him his time in the house of Potiphar and Potiphar's wife who came around and said he raped her and cut the long story short he's in the prison now are we together and it came to pass 40 verse 1 after these things that the butler of the king of Egypt and his baker had offended the Lord of Egypt verse 2 and Pharaoh was wrought against two of his officers against the chief of the butlers and against the chief of the bakers and he put them in word in the house of the captain of the guard into the prison hmm. the place where Joseph was bound stop there please look up very interesting rendition that there are times there is a location in destiny please keep that scripture where both good and bad people meet there is a location in destiny that does not necessarily depend on the accuracy of your work or otherwise the Bible says two people who had offended the king came into the prison and to their shock they found out that the innocent was also in the prison that the godly was also in the prison that there is a place where both men of character and lack of character can meet there is a place where men who are sincere and passionate and those who are lazy and unserious will meet this is a very strange mystery are we together now so the discourse starts in the prison why will a good man and an evil man still find themselves in the same position a man who feared God who has shewed evil who on account of his integrity you would think that that man should just be defended and never even need to go through such a thing where is the scripture that says I was young and now I am old I have never seen the righteous forsaken please give us that scripture this is a revelation that will help us by the spirit to mature and edit our interpretation and also discern how God answers prayers because when God speaks to you you must understand what he's saying for instance Mary's trouble started the day he said you are highly favored that means everything that follows God's statement in his eyes is called favor 
from the day God tells a woman you are highly favored, she gets into trouble. Her stomach is protruding. There are rumors all around. And they are saying, Mary, I thought you were a virgin. And she says, I still am. And says, so how do you explain this? Which rabbi came around? No, 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 no. It was a ghost. I met an angel who told me a ghost from heaven will come. And that what is in my womb is a holy child. You know how stupid that sounds? And yet in the mind of God, he calls it favor. So could it be that what you are going through now, that the devil is making you feel that it is defeat in the eyes of prophecy because a day will come the reward will be for only the, the person who the person who has passed through what you have passed through and if you have not gone through that kind of thing you cannot qualify for it are we together there are times in life where they will invite you to come and preach not because you can preach but you are the only one who have gone through what you have gone through and you have earned the right God calls it Are we together? That a day can come in your life. Look up, please. When the requirement will be the person who was never raised by a father, never raised by a mother, who among the people to be honored went through life on his own, unassisted. You will now find out that your 13 years of pain now puts you in a position of exclusivity. There is a monetary value to pain. There is a destiny value to pain. You must learn to read the writings on the wall so you do not call what is profitable a disaster. Is God helping us? So back to the scripture. We're exploring the mysteries of restoration. The discourse starts with the prison. Are we still together? That an innocent young boy who served the Lord sincerely and you know the beautiful thing about scripture is that it gives you an opportunity to see the story from God's standpoint and from the standpoint of man. It would have been a disaster if we did not have the opportunity to know the truth of the story. Because it would then alter our interpretation about Joseph. So good people and evil people can find themselves in the prison. So Jesus can be on the cross and yet two criminals are by his left and right and all of them are hanging on a cross. So if they say, give me the list of all who are hanging on the cross, you will call Jesus too as one of those hanging on the cross. And by the interpretation of men, anybody who hangs on the cross is a sinner except that one is hanging on the cross not for the sin he committed for himself. It's a sacrifice for others this already should be a message to give us wisdom that when you see people go through things you cannot understand the secret is to pray for them and remain discerning because there are people carrying burdens they have no business carrying God part of the requirement of the grace they carry has compelled them to go through things that ordinarily they will never have gone through Listen, it's a mystery in the making of men. It's how compassion is built. The ability to be touched with the feelings of, inf of, God's inf of, of the infirmity of God's people. Do you know that if you are called into the healing ministry, you will be surprised at the kind of training you will go through. You will never be able to minister to people with a dimension of innocence. There is a requisite level of association. You must know what sickness does to people so that it will fuel compassion passion when you see someone on a wheelchair this is more than your ego there is there is a memory bank in your history where you can draw power from it would have been unfair for God to say men did not love him without becoming a man even though he was God he needed to become a man subject himself through the limitations of men and Jesus was surprised that when he became a man he cried he was surprised that when he became, ah, are you getting blessed? That when he became a man, he was hungry and cursed a tree. When he became a man, he saw them insulting the house of God, turning it into a place of merchandise. He did not report them. He flogged them. Now, when he ascended to heaven as man, he tells the father, I was there. I know what it means 
to come and preach on Sunday when there is a plethora of betrayal waiting for me as a man of God. I, I understand. I know what it means to be praying for people and praying for people and maybe your own family may be going through the same challenge. Yet the burden of ministry demands that you remain true and consistent. That you learn to look beyond yourself. There is a time when both Joseph and the wine presser can be in the prison. So if they ask you as an onlooker to give a judgment about all those you find in prison, you can use the attitude of sarcasm to say, I saw Joseph, I saw the builds and altar that is backed up by blood. That even in the secret, the jealousy of God is invested upon that altar. Believe There are certain doors that you don't use a key. You use blood to open them. And there are men and women who have gone through this laborious. The training of the great is a training that God has to hold your hand to go through. Some of you right now, as I'm speaking to you, you are seated, you are in that season. Hmm. Cry with honor. Do not be ashamed of your scar. What looks like a symbol of shame today will become your badge of honor. He said, let no man trouble me. That the difference between an attack of the enemy and a season you are passing through is that even in the pit, there is still the signature of dominion and favor. The Bible says, even though it was in the prison, there was a token that God left, that let this be a signature, oh Joseph, that when darkness is all around you, remember that this seed of dominion is still within you. Now for time's sake, the Bible tells us that Joseph and that man, never did Joseph give them the history of how he got there. He was more passionate about serving them and lifting them. And heaven was marking that examination. Joseph had every legitimate ground to say, Young man, don't disturb me with your noise. You offended the king. It's a shame that you got to the throne and you are still back to the pit. I'm an innocent man with prophecy upon my head. I've worked with character and integrity. And now I find myself here. But Joseph said, forget about me. My focus is to see that you are lifted. So then death works in us. The Bible says that life will work in you. That you are trust when the money comes. God says bring it to this ministry and sow it. And you walk like someone who doesn't know what he's doing. And while you are doing it. An onlooker is saying this church thing is really making people mad. And they do not know that there is a system of justice that is vetting the sincerity and the purity of your heart. Are we blessed? Mm. A prison is a place of confinement. A prison is a place of delay. A prison sometimes can be a place of slavery. But I want to tell you prophetically, a prison is a training ground. It's a place where God trains you. Are we blessed? The prison. Many of us are there now. Never trust people who do not have the history of a prison in their journey. Uh -uh. There is a requisite level of qualification that you're passing through the prison adds to your spiritual credentials as you minister on behalf of his majesty. I don't want to know your story. Tell me your pain. There are things I'm searching for. I don't trust your compassion until I see what you've gone through. If you have not been touched with the feelings of the infirmity, I don't believe you truly love people. There are things you go through that fuel genuine compassion. When someone comes to your office and says, man of God, I'm not an irresponsible man. This finance thing is not just working. You don't laugh at him with sarcasm. You say, I've been there. I serve God with my heart. And suddenly the grace 
rises from that gate of compassion. There are many talkatives in the body of Christ without the history of the dealings of the spirit. This is why compassion has not been able to come in the heart of many people. There are people who love God and train their children as best as they could. Raise them in the way of God. And those children just decided to go wayward. Be careful when you begin to conclude and, and, and analyze on those things. And say, no, no, if you train that child well, it may not always be so. Even Jesus, who beheld the word every day for three and a half years, while the crusade was going in negotiation to make money out of Jesus was going on. Is God speaking to us tonight? The prison. For the sake of time, let's discuss the subject of losses. We cannot understand restoration and we cannot understand coming back, bouncing back until we understand losses. To lose means to part ways with something, someone valuable, or a time. To part way with time. To part way with something. To part way with someone. And I wrote down here, very quickly we'll look at it. Five scriptural reasons why people lose anything at all five scriptural reasons now these reasons capture both the training of the believer and a caution to a careless one are we together number one the first reason according to scripture why people lose is lack of discernment please make sure you write it down hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1 please help us media Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1. The first reason why people lose in this kingdom is lack of discernment. It says, therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them sleep. It was while men slept, the Bible says, that the enemy came as a farmer too and planted something. So it says, awake thou that sleepest and Christ shall give you light lack of discernment in Genesis chapter 28 the story of Jacob's encounter at loss that he would later call Peniel it was the encounter where he saw a ladder ascending from the earth to the heaven when you go to verse 16 of Genesis 28 the Bible says Jacob himself counseled himself and rebuked himself he woke up from sleep so the problem was sleep. He woke up from sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I did not know. There are many people who have lost seasons because they could not discern. There are many people who have lost relationships because they could not discern. There are many people who have missed an opportunity to receive territorial anointings because they could not discern. Discernment. Lack of discernment. Number two, for time's sake, we have to rush. The second reason why people lose in this kingdom and then in life and destiny is carelessness. The second biblical reason why people lose is carelessness. An attitude of non-challenge to life, non-challenge to destiny, non-challenge to work, Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 3, please. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? How shall we escape? That means bondage is imminent for anybody who lives a life of negligence. Are we together? Carelessness. Taking life for granted. Taking things for granted taking opportunities for granted oh there's a free mentorship session with my pastor but what is that about i mean i can always get it careless approach to life one day i'll be anointed i, I think there's there's always time 
All this fasting and prayer is, is an interruption to my life. Carelessness. He says, I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day. There is timing with destiny. Every time is not the right time. Every time is not convenient. He says, while it is day for the night cometh when no man can walk again. Are we together? Yes. In athletics, in football, and most sports, they have an age range. No matter how passionate you are about it, once you pass that age range, sorry for you. Football, they have an age range. Tennis, and all of these sports, they have an age range. Athletics, it is important for you to know that there is timing to destiny. So carelessness, Revelation chapter 3 and verse 11. Revelations 3 and verse 11. Read with me please if you are a Christian and you can see it. One, two, read. Behold, I come quickly. Hold fast which thou hast that no man. Carelessness. Let it never be for you that let his bishopric let another take. Carelessness. Number three, very quickly. Why do we lose in this kingdom? Ignorance of the laws of life, the laws of destiny, laws of the kingdom. Ignorance of the laws of life, the laws of destiny, the laws of the kingdom. Psalm 82 and verse 5. That ignorance is a plague in this kingdom. It says they know not, neither will they understand that they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Lack of light. Verse 6 says, I have said, all of you are gods and you are children of the most high. The tragedy is in the next verse, verse 7. It says, but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes ignorance ignorance is a terrible plague Isaiah 60 and verse 1 says arise shine it says not because you are tired of sitting there for your light has come not because your light is around it's always been around but the day it comes to you Ezekiel chapter 2 when you read from verse 1 and 2 he had an instruction rise up and he had no strength he says, but the spirit entered into me, verse 2, and set me upon my feet. It takes light. It takes an understanding of the ways of God. Many people are ignorant of the ways of God. We just live our lives sociologically. Sadly, you hear this all around our society. Why sayings like one day go better? Why sayings like, um, I know one day, one day things will change. You see, all those kinds of thinkings will be to our own peril. Our lives must be intentional. The Bible says, he that strives for mastery is not crowned, except he strives lawfully. The quality of my life and your life is predicated on our depth of spiritual illumination, our understanding the ways of God, not just a religious study of scripture, but study of scripture that reveal to us the keys of the kingdom. Are we blessed? Number four, why do we lose in life and in this kingdom? Abuse and misuse. The fourth reason why we lose, abuse and misuse. In Matthew 25, the parable of the talents, when you read from verse 14 down to 30, Matthew 25, the Bible talks about the parable of three men who were given talents. One was given five, the other two, one. The Bible says the one with five went and traded it and returned back with a hundred percent. The other one with two returned back with a hundred percent. And the one who had one, already he had an attitude of bitterness and jealousy and anger. And he went and buried it. You bury seeds, not talents. And when the master came, he said, I know you are a hard man. 
You like to reap where you did not sow. So I thought instead of wasting my time, let me bury it. Here is your seed. And God called him wicked and unprofitable. That everything God gives you. Let me tell you something. You see, we talk a lot about transfer. Whether well transfer. or It's not only unbelievers that good things leave. Believers who have, who have a track record of abuse and misuse will also lose things. Because God is a God of, of, of caution and he's a God of responsibility. If you are hungry and he feeds you with five loaves and two fish and you now eat and you are full and carelessly waste the rest, he will say, go and gather the crumbs. But tomorrow you can be sure you will not get that bread again. God was so meticulous, he showed us a sense of responsibility and caution. When all those guys ate and they littered everywhere and left, he said, go and gather the crumbs. And they gathered 12 baskets full. Abuse. There are people who have abused power. There are people who have abused and misused money. There are people who have abused and misused the anointing. Abused and misused leadership. Africa as a continent is in a plague today sadly because of different levels of abuse and misuse of authority and power. The fifth reason why we lose in this kingdom, it can be because of the tests and the trials that we are going through. It is possible that because of the dealings and the trainings you are going through in the spirit, for the sake of your destiny, momentarily, certain things can be withdrawn from your life. That is true. The Bible does not leave us in the dark as to the fact that during your period of training, it was Apostle James chapter 1 from verse 2. Please give it to us, James 1 and verse 2. He said, count it all joy, my brethren, when you go through diverse temptations, secure your stability with this knowledge, he says. Knowing this, James chapter 1 from verse 2. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith, he says, works patience. Are we together? Verse 3. And that when patience has had its full work in you, it will be able to build you paraphrasing so that you may be perfect and entire. Wanting, the word wanting there is lacking. Nothing. So sometimes God takes things from you so that tomorrow you will not have any lack again. There are times that God will take your seed of today away from you so that tomorrow you will not need to beg again. It is not listen god does not just give he also takes away but when he takes away it really is a spiritual investment because with god it will always come back hallelujah yes so these are the five reasons that i piece together from scripture as to why people lose a quick recap number one that people lose because of lack of discernment that people lose because of carelessness. That people lose because of ignorance of the laws of life, destiny, and the kingdom. That people lose because of abuse and misuse. But then that there are times that this group of people, because of the seasons that they are in with God, the season of dealing, that they can go through tests and trials. Job chapter 1. When you read from verse 9, the whole text is from verse 9 to 22. Job chapter 1 from verse 9 to 22. But let's look at at least 9, 10, and 11. The Bible says, Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for nothing? Next verse. Hast thou not made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. Now hear what Satan says. But put forth your hand now, and touch all that he had, and he will curse you to your face. In other words, Job's allegiance and loyalty to you, oh God, is fake. He is only saying it on the strength of those things. The next verse. That should be 12. And the Lord said unto Satan, very scary scripture, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power, only upon himself put not thy hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. 
Then sin two is what begins to happen in the earth. There was a day. The Bible calls it a day of adversary. That in every man's life, there is such a phenomenon. A day of adversary. That if you turn aside in that day, the diagnosis is that your strength is small. Hallelujah. I wrote here keys for restoration. Let's hurry up and touch on them so we can pray. Now that we have seen the factors that are responsible for losses, please don't just write these things, study them and see where it applies to your life. For some of you, it is lack of discernment. You see, seasons are like the hand of a clock. When you miss it, it may come back but you will have to wait a very long time. So like the Magi, the wise men, you have to be discerning. To discern moments that you can capitalize on. Keys for restoration. It is true that God is a restorer. It is true that God can restore. Hallelujah. Such a powerful comfort for the saints that no matter what you've lost the mystery I hope that we'll be able to deal with it is that everything that leaves you is still on earth now that's a very good news if it leaves me and it is still on earth then there is hope for recovery and scripture says there is hope for a tree do you know why there's hope for a tree because provided the earth from where it came out from is still there there is hope for a tree. There are four keys that I wrote here that are prophetic road maps. I wish we had time to walk this as seen in the life of Joseph. But if any one of you in this assembly following online from any part of the world, if you walk through this process, I give you a guarantee by the integrity of scripture regardless what the situation is you truly will come out are we together this is where i want you to pray in one minute cry and say lord open my eyes no assumptions open my eyes in the name of jesus that that which you are about to show because many of us are at this point now haven't explained to you the mystery of the prison haven't explained to you the mystery of the losses around your life and destiny whether it was for a genuine reason or otherwise. I am showing you a prophetic road map by the Spirit that a way out can come if you can see. Are we blessed? Now look up. Please receive with meekness these truths that I want to teach you. The first key I have found, if you want to experience restoration in your life, your family, your spiritual life, your finances, your destiny, the first key to restoration according to scripture is self-examination and evaluation. The first biblical key to experience lasting restoration the power of self examination not just prayer not just fasting not just finding a man of God in that order of priority self examination there is nobody who receives restoration in this kingdom if you cannot sit down and be thoughtful Second Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 5. Help us media. Second Corinthians chapter 3 and verse. Oh dear. Look, let's look at Luke 15. Luke 15. I wrote a scripture there that I can't seem to find. Luke 15 from verse 17 to 20. The Bible talks about the prodigal son. The story of the prodigal son. Remember the story? The Bible says how that that gentleman provided he was staying with his father. 
he was not satisfied coming under the authority of his father and he wanted to live life at his own terms and then scripture reveals that he left and lived a riotous life for many years notice lack started when he left his father now the story of the prodigal son is not the story of sinners because it's a family it has nothing to do with sinners number two for your information the story of the prodigal son is the story of two people with the same lifestyle the only difference is one acted out his own whereas the other hid his own in the heart both the elder brother and the old and the younger brother did the same thing the only thing is that the younger brother was fast to act out his own rebellion but the elder brother also had his own hidden there are we together now so the bible talks about this gentleman who later finds himself with the swine pigs eating from them and then read verse 17 please the first five words or six words one to go and when he came to the bible never said when an angel appeared to advise him listen human beings have their wills and you can sit down and think through life please keep that scripture there he came to himself how do you come to yourself by thinking there is the voice of your heart the bible says say not in your heart so you don't just think you can speak in your heart he came to himself he said how many hired servants it's called the power of thoughtfulness if you can take an introspect of your life and your destiny self-examination are we together many people never rise from the shackles of life and destiny because they are preoccupied by offense and will not sit down and examine their own lives why am i like this why is my church not growing lord you called me why is it that my pastor continues to prophesy over my life and people testify here every week i am a faithful worker and according to the authority of scripture i'm a bona fide partaker of the grace upon the man of god why is it not speaking in my life he came to himself there are times you need to go for a retreat, not just to pray. The Bible said, be still and know. There is a kind of knowledge that stillness brings. Are we together? That you go and lock yourself and sit down quietly and say something must be wrong. He came to himself. January, this happened. Just when I was recovering, my wife got sick. Just when she was recovering, my child got sick. Just when he was recovering, no, no, no. This is more than sickness. I see that there is a handwriting of Satan wanting to destroy my thoughtfulness. It's unfortunate that we live in a world where we are preoccupied by activities. And so thoughtfulness now is a luxury. But believers, hear me. In this end time, we must trust God for grace to hide away from people. If you're a man of God here, respectfully, this is an honest advice. You, you will never be a cutting edge tool in this end time. If you, the, the, the gallancy and the flamboyancy of ministry can deceive us into believing that just because activities are around Joshua Selman, it means we are making progress. We need to sustain the courage and the stamina to go back. In fact, in the spirit, Spirit, the more God honors you, he does it by hiding you. That everything that is glorious is hidden. If all of you is seen by all men, you are not powerful. And when Rebecca saw Isaac, she veiled herself as a proof that she was a bride befitting for him. As soon as she saw Isaac, the one she would be connected to, she veiled herself. It is the reason why your heart is hidden. It is the reason why the sensitive or comely parts of your body, like Apostle Paul was teaching, are hidden. Don't be embarrassed when God hides you. He's hiding you as proof of the value he has for you. Are we together? But we're dealing with self-examination. The young man sat down one day 
and came to himself. He said, how many hired servants does my father have? And I am here feeding with the swine. I will arise and I will go to my father, he said. And I will say, father, I have sinned against you and against heaven. And I am not worthy. He had not gone home. He was discussing self-examination. That in the name of Jesus, I will not be a lazy man in this Abuja again. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's. I know there is a portion for me. I have been giving excuses and saying all my family members are like that. I know my father did not train me. I know I did not have the leverage of uncles and aunties. But if I continue to give this excuse, I will find out one day I'm 50 years, 60 years. Years, 70 years giving excuses from today I make up my mind self examination this life of disobedience and dishonor to my pastor every time he's prophesying I stand and I say oh I'm the one washing his car and for five years I've not received any testimony I come back to myself I'm coming for this service with my heart open and if my pastor is prophesying, I will not just see him as my pastor. He is God's apostolic voice to me. Self-examination. Fear a man who has sat down to think. He's ready to rise. Listen. Let me tell you how restoration came to Samaria. I wish we had time. We would have walked scripture tonight. The Bible says there were four lepers. For as long as they were silent and not thinking, they remained on the ground. But when prophecy came, the spirit of wisdom landed on them and they began to think and contemplate. Why sit we here till we die? They began a conversation. Charlie hmm. Paruskiata. Let's get up. If we fall into their hands, at least let's take that risk and make meaning out of our destiny. Instead of sitting down and giving excuses, Nigeria is not working. Let me go and look for land at least somewhere. I may not have the money to buy it, but they will not arrest me for seeing. Let me, let me, let me trust God for grace. Self-examination. No, I, I, I think Reverend Abba is too busy to see me. I, I need this grace. And I keep seeing him in my dreams. But I'm sure one day, by God's divine mercy, he will connect us. You are joking. You are really joking. One day you have to sit down and ask yourself, am I ready to sit here in pride or humble myself and pursue like the woman with the issue of blood? And you may get up and say, I will come and sit in the church here. On that day, God will say, my son, please come around and just stroll. You see, the, the prodigal son didn't need to reach home before he met his father. That means the father was already walking too. But he needed to examine himself and take a step of faith. Someone say in the name of Jesus. Please shout it. Say in the name of Jesus. I receive grace to sit down and be thoughtful. I kill every excuse over my life, my ministry, my destiny. Turn it into prayer in one minute. Lord, I'm tired of giving excuses. Why I remain small, why I fail. I'm tired of giving excuses. Why the unction of the Spirit is not upon my life. There are enough anointed vessels for my life to change. Someone is praying. Please be serious. Pray. Someone is praying in the name of Jesus. Come to yourself. Come to yourself. I'm tired of laziness. Come to yourself. One more minute as you pray. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Please sit down. I want you to enter a covenant with your destiny tonight that I'm going to go back home and ask questions. We have an altar in our family. It's not new. The altar brought my grandfather. He brought my father. So I'm suspecting that's what is happening. I'm sure one day I'll think about it. Oh my goodness. Oh no, sir. Oh no, sir. One day you have to wake up by 2 a.m. and say, sleep. You hang on. I am sick and tired of this. 
I come to myself that what killed my father and God opens your eyes to see that there is an arrow looking for your destiny and for your children and you stand with power and fire self-examination it was God's servant Bishop Oyedeko that said when they started the church in Kaduna listen to me I started ministry in Zaria. I know the spirits and the altar in that territory. The lifespan of impact is three years. If you reach three years, something must bring you down and bring your ministry out in shame. So I understand what you were saying because they are ancient gates. And he said the church was not growing. He would have given the excuse. But he said, you know what? Let's gather a few of the leaders. And they began to examine to contemplate suddenly the spirit of God brought him out according to him and showed him a thick layer of darkness that misrepresents the ministry and he, he did something about it and all of a sudden doors open why are my younger brothers feeding me why am I the one who I am the one who invites all of them for encounter programs and yet at this level of life I've not been able to build a house at this it's not like your faith is tied to those things but hear me there has to be a consolation to your Christian experience if by and large fruits do not grow on that tree life will not give you forever as an excuse are we together until you love your destiny more than sleep you are not ready to rise there are times when you should it's not an attack you just sit down and you are angry and say look my wife wake up we need to discuss this thing what is going on in this family abuja is a good land someone came to abuja in january and right now they have seen the faithfulness of god we've been here since 1998 something is wrong we confess our ignorance but for starters let us come to that point of recognition I can assure you, if we call God's servant, your pastor and father today to come and hold this mic and tell you his story of sojourn through this land, I am sure that we are going to weep in this place like a funeral, a testament of audacity and power, waking up in the night. Thank God for your dream. Joseph had a dream, but you wake up to fulfill it. Dreams are powerful, but they don't happen in the realm of the spirit. Men who dream, wake up. Can you prophesy and say, myself, wake up? <laughs> One more time, myself, wake up. Don't be embarrassed. This is a conference. Myself, wake up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Wake up. He came to himself. Number two, few minutes and we're done tonight. The second key that provokes restoration in this kingdom is the power of brokenness. Psalm 51 and verse 17. It is not enough to examine yourself. You must get to a point where the Bible says that the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. It says a broken and a contrite heart. Oh God thou will not despise that means god cannot ignore a broken person brokenness requires many things a recognition and then you have to admit brokenness lord it is my i've been living life at my own terms i am sure it's my pride that has brought me to this place and lord i'm not ashamed i go down on my knees to you who is the maker of the heavens and the earth if you don't help me in this city i cannot rise i come before you there's nothing to be ashamed of brokenness brokenness is a very powerful mystery As a man of God, you come to God broken. Lord, I love you, but lately I found out I've just been doing ministry just for the sake of money. And it may not be that I'm evil, but sincerely I think uh, maybe, maybe there are things in my life. I'm, 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 there, 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 are, there are too many compromises, but I come before you sincerely. 
there is one thing I know about God. When God sees brokenness, he cannot ignore it. Genuine brokenness. Hallelujah. Brokenness. Where you open up your heart sincerely like the psalmist and say, search my heart and try my thoughts. Check, oh God, if thou see any evil way in me, please lead me to the way everlasting. Some of you here, if you are broken enough, you will come out of that situation. The problem is you are still giving explanations and then hoping, you see, this pride is a dangerous thing. Whatever you do, fight pride from your life. You cannot do bold face for life. You have to just humble yourself and say, Lord, show me mercy and help me. A broken and a contrite heart. Number three. What is the third key that sponsors restoration in this kingdom? Are we making progress? Knowledge. Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 9. Knowledge. You need knowledge. A recognition of the grace and the mercy of God is important, but you need knowledge. Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 9. The B part is my part of emphasis. It says, through knowledge shall the just be what? There is a kind of deliverance that is conducted by casting out the spirit influences behind that situation. But there is a kind of deliverance that happens as a fortification through knowledge. The Bible says to preach deliverance, not only to conduct it. There is a dimension of revelation that secures deliverance. Everyone please say knowledge. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1, Amplified says, Arise from the prostration and the depression that circumstances have kept you. It says, Rise to a new light. You see, it's important for us to know that we need light. Light enough, not just light. Jesus wept over Jerusalem and said, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, if you had known, even in this time, the things that pertain unto your peace, he says, but now they are hidden from your eyes. You need to go for knowledge. Gather the tapes of your pastor. Gather the CDs. Take a three days time of fasting and prayer. And sit down and flog it out with destiny. Lord, open my eyes. What is the key to speed? Open my eyes. What is the key to sustainable influence? Open my eyes. Why are my hands empty? Lord, open my eyes. And while you are listening to the message, suddenly, as the man of God is ministering, light breaks. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 21. God will open your eyes to explain to you the mystery of an empty hand. He said, and I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall pass that when ye go, ye shall not go empty. Lord, why have I not gotten a property, whether for myself or something? I know there is a way. Psalm 44, I think, verse 3. They got not the land in possession by their own sword. So this is not a, a thing of sword. Neither did their own arm save them, but thy right hand and thy arm, and the light of thy countenance, because thou hadst a favor unto them. Luke 2, 52. And Jesus increased in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God and with men. Esther chapter 2 from verse 15, the B part says, and Esther obtained favor in the eyes of all them that looked upon her. Verse 17 now says, same scripture. It says, and Esther was loved by the king above all the women she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than more than more than suddenly you begin to pray it in your life and walk those keys and your life will change like day and night is god helping us we need knowledge Please fight ignorance like you fight Satan. Fight ignorance. Ignorance is a dangerous thing. In this end time, you cannot live your life wishing and hoping. You must get exact knowledge. The Bible says to walk circumspect as wise and unwise. 
arrange the various aspects of your life where you are trusting God for sustainable lifting and fish out the mysteries that connect your desires to your destiny. What is responsible for speed? What is responsible for church growth? What is responsible for transgenerational impact and influence? What is responsible for ever increasing fire? What is responsible for the anointing of the spirit? What is responsible for relevance within the context of a generation? There are mysteries that control these dimensions. It is the glory of God to hide a thing, but it's the honor of the kings to search it out. I was teaching in Lagos and I gave a parable that the Lord opened my eyes to see. Theologically, it's called the parable of the lost coin. The Bible says that a woman lost her coin in a room. She knew that there was a precious jewel in that room that could make her wealthy, could make her great, but it was missing. And the first thing she did was to light a candle. Light. You cannot search in darkness. The second thing she did was to find a broom. With that broom, she swept everywhere. That's how we search for things. A candle and a broom. A broom talks of your hunger and your consistent pursuit. You sweep by getting all the tapes your pastor preached on faith. You don't get one or two because you may find part one of the revelation that will liberate you here. Then you now go to a 2016 message and find the other parts that God is building for you. It's called sweeping. You need light enough. I made a statement a few days ago. Morning, the breaking of day does not depend on time. It depends on the victory of light over darkness. Every time light prevails over darkness, you call it day. It is not when it is 6 o'clock or 8 a.m. that you say it's day. No. All through the night, there is a warfare between darkness and light. The time that light wins is what you call day. So if light wins by 2 a.m., it will become day. Are we together? Knowledge. Knowledge. I have cherished knowledge as a man of God and I have cherished knowledge as a person. I am, I am a passionate seeker of knowledge. I'm not embarrassed by the things I do not know. My heart is very open. When I find truth that is relevant to my life and destiny, I'm like a sponge. My heart is open unashamedly. The proof of passion is pursuit. You have to trust God for grace to pursue knowledge. You will never gain knowledge at your own terms. Dr. Mudok would say adaptation is proof of honor. You have to bend. Getting knowledge from those who carry them will require stamina and sacrifice. I'm sorry to say it, but we live in an arrogant generation that want to be great at our own terms. Let the pastor see me. I can, my, I'm busy. Uh, I can, I'm, I'm, I'm only free between 11 and 12. Please see me then and pray for me. You are in trouble. No. The woman with the issue of blood kept asking. She was just hoping. She knew Jesus would pass. Ask the men and the women of God who carry real grace. They will tell you the story of their endurance as they pursued God and they pursued vessels that really carried fire. Many of them would travel for conferences they have no business attending and would sit down quietly like fools. I've shared my testimony. Many years ago, I was in a Reinhard Bonke crusade. There was a grace upon him that I desired, Pastor. I traveled down to Joss. He was coming for a crusade. I didn't just sit down and say, Oh God, this is the grace I want. You are the giver of all good things. If you've been evil, know how to and quote those scriptures out of context that legitimize laziness and mediocrity. I went and stood on that crusade ground for six hours the first night. I watched this man minister. I have revelation. I'm a man of God too. I've seen miracles in my own life too. But you will never receive from a colleague in this kingdom. There must be spiritual potential difference. It is through light and knowledge. Please listen. I will never forget the second day. 
I made up my mind that I'm not only going to come and stand on that crusade ground. Lord, I want to serve. I understand the power of service. And I saw them wheeling people on wheelchairs. I said, please, can I help? They said, no, no, no. These people belong to a committee. They are trained. I said, committee or no committee? You don't know how long I travel to be here. I must serve. While I was pushing the people to the front, I said, Lord, this is how my crusades and my meetings will be too. I saw with honor and with passion. All I need is you. second day he preached a very simple message and he was about to take water and minister the baptism when God opened my eyes that was the first time I saw the manifestation of the Holy Spirit like a dove it was a dove that was bigger than this building bring round the crusade ground I thought everybody was seeing it I was watching he was about to minister the miraculous was about to happen I had seen miracles I had seen unbelievable situations by the Spirit of God. Listen, when you find what you need, break your pride, pay the price, pursue sincerely, allow fools and mediocres to make comments while you receive. We know that God is taking your master today. Save Johnny. And Elisha said, I know you are a temperous man, Elijah. Keep insulting me while I position to receive. Do you have the stamina to endure? Let me tell you, anointed vessels are difficult people. Some of them are arrogant. Some of them are insensitive. Do you have the stamina to look past those things and say, I know what my heart searches for. I can't be so selfish to allow my ego rob a generation of a dimension of God. The spirit of Elijah dot rest on Elisha. When that grace landed upon my life, I remember many years ago, the Lord gave me an instruction that he was going to lead me to God's servant to go and sow a seed, Bishop David Oedeko. And that morning, God told me this was the day. I will not tell you how much, but many of you will be surprised. I got up, got the next available flight. I went. Behind every story, there is, behind what is, every glory, there is a real story. Before you admire men, find out their story. Nothing works by mistake. There's nobody who wins the Olympic by mistake. I want you to cherish your pastors sincerely. Not every man of God will open up their scars to you to watch. No, the pain is too precious. I remember long and short when so the seed, when I came out, the Holy Ghost asked me to put my hand on the ground there in Canaan land and said, from today you have entered the overflow anointing. A product of many anointings it takes knowledge knowledge with hunger and passion hunger and passion the sacrifice of your pastor bringing vessels of grace to minister to you should be a clear proof that he sincerely loves you you know members sometimes i say this respectfully we need to honor the sacrifice we never know the adaptation and the sacrifice that the servants of god go through for the sake of the sheep he says a good sheep. there is no voice that say yet restore you will have to depend on someone who is already out of that prison the bible says the king sent for joseph and brought him out of the dungeon the fourth key that brings restoration is the ministry of the prophetic the ministry of the prophetic now I know that, respectfully speaking, all across this land, 
Africa and the entire globe, there has been quite some excesses, errors, imbalances, and outright failure in the administration of the ministry of the apostolic and the prophetic especially. I know that there have been excesses and all of those things. These things are not hidden. We say it with the heart of respect and honor for the body of Christ, but it is true. And so in a bid to manage these things, there are people who are who continue to advocate the complete annihilation of the prophetic and the apostolic ministry as a way of managing the imbalances and the excesses. No. Jesus said in Matthew 26, I will build my church. So he's the architect. You go to him to find out how he builds the church. And this is how he builds the church. He said, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, that immediately you encounter Jesus, there are two ministries you must meet, the apostolic and the prophetic to be built. This is how Jesus designed the church. That even in heaven, the foundations are made of the 12 names of the apostles. Are we together? Hmm. Jesus, the Son of God, is in heaven desiring to come to the earth. And not even him in his power had the right to come into this territory without someone calling him. So Anna the prophetess had to spend years speaking and calling the word. You just know that the word became flesh, but do you know there were prophecies that made the word flesh? Number one, when Jesus was born, they quickly took him to these people. Jesus. Jesus walked under a closed heaven for 30 years, even as the Son of God. No mention of his heavens opened until he went to find the prophet who God was using before he came over that territory. Now, let me show you a mystery. Why many people remain grounded. John was not a Baptist. John was a prophet. Baptism was a strategy given to him to identify Jesus. So he will baptize and look up, he will say go. He will baptize and look up, he will say go. He will baptize and look up, he will say go. Baptize and look up, he will say go. Suddenly, Shalika Paruta Siata. By the prophetic, he identifies a young 30 year old man. And he says, Behold the Lamb. You are not a man. Men see a man, but a prophet is seen a lamb. That takes away the sins of the world. I am not worthy to untie the latchets of your shoe. I'm sure if Jesus, if Joshua Selman were Jesus, you say that's nice for recognizing that I'm not a small man. But John made a statement that is a prophetic instruction. Suffer it to be so. This is an ordinance. If I do not submit to what you represent, my own heavens cannot open. This is your Bible. John and God is watching in heaven. John dips Jesus in the water. He comes out and your Bible says, and the heavens open. And the Holy Ghost descended and then the father spoke he said this is my beloved son question what was he before listen please this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased and he gave earth an instruction nobody could break hear ye him who has told your church that who has told your products that has somebody told your products, Abuja, hear ye him? I show you why many people are grounded. Even when Apostle Paul met Jesus Christ, Jesus still referred him back to the house of Ananias and said, wait there. Why do you need to see a man when you have met Jesus? And he said, still wait. There is a system I have built for your lifting. Let me show you a mystery. You see, the dimensions of God that are distributed to the earth for the edification of the saints happen through covenants. Let me explain to you what that means. 
faith, healing. God hides his anointing primarily in men. Are we together? Now, the way God works it out is that he calls, he finds men in every dispensation. And then through the sacrifice of alignment, he enters a personal covenant with them. Not Old Testament, not New Testament. A covenant with them that becomes the legitimate platform for administering that dimension of his grace within the lifespan of that dispensation. Now, when God finds such people, he now refers them on earth as the custodians of that dimension of him. Any other person who must enjoy that dimension of him experientially must do it in recognition and alignment to those systems. They are not just men. They have become through covenant spiritual systems that administer dimensions of God. Are we together? Provided they are alive, God will never ignore their office in reaching you with that dimension. Let me give you an instance. On earth today, the spiritual system according to the wisdom of God that represents faith is Kenneth Copeland. Any man of God on earth that is operating faith that is tangible would have crossed that path to touch with that altar of alignment. The man that represents the healing ministry today on earth, it doesn't mean he's the greatest healer. No, this is not about greatness. It's about the election of grace of an individual who has become the spiritual conduit of a dimension. That individual today on earth is Benny Hinn. And that grace came upon him from Oral Roberts. Now, you need to, this is the protocol of lifting that many people do not understand. So when God says, I'm calling you into a healing ministry, I don't care how he starts dealing with you. One day, he is going to orchestrate. I mean healing ministry at a global level. One day, he's going to create a meeting point where you and that spiritual system that administered that dimension, you will collide. It's true. Did you read in your Bible that... Abraham met a strange man in an ancient city called Salem, called Melchizedek. Is it in your Bible? That God established his priesthood after that order. Melchizedek looked at Abraham and said, Blessed be Abraham, son of the Most High. He called him possessor of heaven and earth. Elijah was not a prophet. Elijah was a spiritual system that foreruns revival. That's why the Bible says before the Lord comes, before the great and terrible day of the Lord, Elijah will come. Elijah is the name given to a, a spiritual, apostolic, and prophetic system that realigns men back to the purposes of God. The name of that system is Elijah. It, a man only embodied it. That was why when Elijah died, the system continued in John. Just like Jezebel is not a woman, Jezebel is a system of rebellion that administers the system of Babylon by attaching herself to power and authority. Elijah dies, Jezebel dies, Elijah resurrects in John, Jezebel resurrects in Herodias. Jezebel promised Elijah to remove his head, and then we see that when they dance on the king's birthday. He said, what request will be granted? Listen to me. Let me teach you a mystery. The men you see that walk this earth are young, but what is upon them is ancient. It's the continuity of a relay. You have to understand this. I wish I were lying. I would have just apologized and we share the grace. But I'm showing you something that is a deep mystery. Challenges are not generic. They are dependent on the grace and the altar that confronts it. You can be going through something for decades, but the day you find the prophet sent, not the prophet available, the prophet sent, there were many widows in Zarephath, but to none was Elijah sent. The word that delivers is not the word you read. It is the word sent. We're about to pray. 
They are taken for a prey and none say it restore. Now listen to me. When you discern who your man of God is, for as long as you think he's a man of God, is a pastor, and we are members of this church, you will never receive anything. There must be a deep contemplation of discernment. Who is this man? Know we no man after the flesh. What are the mysteries that sit upon his head that are responsible for the possibilities in his life? It is based on that revelation that you stand to receive. You can kneel down and yet you are standing up. That, that is just a, an emotional show. I mean a deep-seated recognition. I have met people that I know I was sent to. And it's amazing how what they call challenges were trivialized. Happy are you when you find the anointing sent to you. Let me tell you this. Not every anointing available will lift you. Yes, sir. All that you have given me, John 17, I have kept. And none is lost except the son of perdition. All that you have given me. All that you have given me. Are we together? There are men of God that require... I'm not just talking of someone higher than you speaking to you. There is a place for that. I'm not just talking of someone who is an elder in the faith just prophesying to you. There is a place for that. I'm talking of encountering the grace, the spiritual covenant that is connected to your destiny. Ignorant people will fight what I'm saying to their peril. Listen. I don't boast to know everything in the kingdom. I remain a student, gleaning from the wisdom of men and women helped by God. But on this revelation, I tell you it is an office. I know what I'm saying. You know you have received when your results show. We're about to pray. And I want us to do something prophetic in two minutes. Forgive me, but I, I share the burden of your pastor. I'm going to pray for you, but I will respectfully plead, even if it is for one minute, that your pastor and your father please come to stand on this stage. And by the Spirit of God, he's going to utter words of restoration. Believe what I am telling you. You will, many of you, Tomorrow will not come until your life starts changing. It's true. I didn't have time to do a thorough exegesis of the word. You will read the, the arrogance and the foolishness of men to the prophetic. The prophet says by this time tomorrow. There are two dimensions of the prophetic. There is the revelatory dimension of the prophetic. And there is the creative dimension of the prophetic. The most superior dimension of the prophetic revealed to men is the creative dimension. Revelation gives you direction and then it imparts faith. Creation makes what has no business happening to happen. When he said by this time tomorrow, he was not revealing in advance what would have happened anyway. No. The same way you are going back home quietly and someone can look at you and by the mantle and the unction, he can program a climate of favor on your head and say, go. Hmm. A man's donkey is missing for three days. They prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and could not get the donkey. But the moment Saul saw Samuel, they didn't talk about the donkey, just an eye contact and the donkey started going back home. This is not human worship. Please discern what I'm telling you. And don't, don't mix it with some of these things that people do. But right now we want to pray. In one minute. I don't know how you are going to cry to God. But please cry to God. And say, Father, every dishonor that I've communicated to this grace because of lack of discernment, I obtain mercy tonight. And I receive with an open heart. I desire my life to change. I understand the ministry of the prophetic. Someone is praying. Someone is praying. Your life is about to change. Lift your voice and pray. Hello. 
Scriptures exalt us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.